Hello everyone, today we are talking about something the community is somewhat in a stir about lately, a little bit. Maybe if you're retarded, it's something you're you're not sure about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, today we're going to be talking about how do you determine who wins a debate. Now, there's a few ways to go about this. There's like different like models of like dialectics you can use to determine like how an argument goes. But I think a simple way, and I think most people that usually debate a lot of people, especially randoms, um, will agree with the, what I'm about to say. So debates are usually uh, structured from their premise and what kind of debate you're having. So if you were to look at like a pragma dialectical model, and I'm taking this out of like a theory of argumentation, but so in the pragma dialectical model of argumentation, it provides for the application of such values in the confrontation stage of argumentative discourse. In the opening stage, the participants agree on one, what propositions they will jointly accept without further argument, and two, how will they jointly decide on the acceptability of other propositions? So usually when you have a debate, it's immediately structured from the very beginning. So if I were to debate you on the Bible, okay, and we're debating on something in the book of Revelations, right? You are usually agreeing that the Bible exists, right? You're probably agreeing that the book of Revelations exists. You're probably agreeing that English means the same thing to you as it does for them, right? You're agreeing on a lot of things from the get-go. And then two, how do you accept or decide what to accept later on? Now, this is usually for more respectful and constructive conversations with people that aren't retarded um but basically uh if you were to debate on something like say uh power scaling or something like for a fictional story it's like who how do you determine someone stronger than another it's like well what kind of cool shit has he done right what is he able to blow up or is it stated he can blow up something right and then whoever has the better statements or feats or whatever the fuck is usually considered stronger and you can agree on that however from there it's like okay what if it's more subjective what if it's more vague right and from there it kind of still comes down to the same rule but it's a little bit different and it should be determined in a in a different way so like when you're a viewer and you're listening to a debate and you hear two arguments from, you know, the two sides. One side you agree with and the other you do not agree with. But the side you don't agree with seems to be consistently withholding its positions. Whereas the side you do agree with is getting pushed around point to point. And this comes down to a problem with informal debating, which is, just because your premise is withheld doesn't mean you aren't losing the debate, right? So, for instance, a lot of people watched uh, me versus Quaman's Land, right? We were just debating about, like, some weird narrative shit. And if you listen to the debate, there is not a single time where Quaman didn't drop a point and try to move to a different aspect of what he's arguing. He'll bring up a point. He'll try to argue it, and then he'll have to be forced to drop it and try to find a new way to argue, whereas I'm just a wall, just slowly moving forward. I'm never dropping my points, really. Maybe I dropped one or two. I'm not too sure, but you can basically tell I, if at all, didn't really drop anything. So I'm not dropping any points. I'm moving slowly like a wall throughout this conversation, whereas he's constantly flip-flopping, right? And then you look in the comments like, well, I think Quaman won. And it's like, but why? And it's like, well, I agree with what he's saying more. And it's like, okay, you can agree with what someone's saying, but still acknowledge they lost the argument, right? Because when you have dialectics, you need to realize that someone is flat earthing you if they're doing that. Okay, so flat earthing is a term I've made, but it's pretty easy to digest. So flat earthing is basically, imagine you're debating a flat earther and they're never going to try to contradict their premise. Okay, but they're always on the attack. So they're going to say things like, okay, prove it's daytime in Moscow and night in America or something. 
And then you're like, okay, here's some live feed of that. And they're like, okay, prove it's exactly this time in the North Pole and prove it's exactly this time in the South Pole. And you prove that. But then they keep going on and on and on until hoping that you can't perfectly prove something so they have a leg to stand on. That's called flat earthing. So even though every single claim, question, or skepticism they've had is getting thrashed, their premise is still withheld, so people still think they are valid in the argument. However, it should be noted, in terms of raw argumentation, they're getting throttled. They're getting intellectually dominated because their skepticisms, things they thought were valid, are completely wrong. So it should be more looked at and scrutinized that these things they think are valid are being denied and they have to drop them rather than the fact they are still arguing okay and another thing is is you can hear someone argue with a side that you agree with and you could agree with it for different reasons than what they are actually voicing in the discussion right so say you're listening to a debate and you're like okay I see where he's coming from because of this, right? Maybe he says A, and you're like, well, yeah, because that leads to B. But what if your speaker that you agree with never describes or is able to articulate B? Is the audience supposed to accept that B is his argument because you came up with it in your head as a response to the discussion? No, that is not how argument works. That's just who you agree with. <laughs> So that is something that should be considered in argumentation at all times. Now, other than that, there are other ways to determine who wins, right? So for instance, uh, that's only if there's like a no judge or something. But if at the beginning of the debate, your opponent says, I am okay with the audience determining who wins, then the audience determines who wins the debate. As retarded as it sounds, that is the rule you set for the conversation, okay? Or if they're like, okay, yeah, this guy can judge. This guy can judge the debate. If he says someone else wins, they won the debate because that is what you agreed to. Now, you could argue from an outside perspective that you think that someone else won the debate, but from their stance, they have conceded that they lost on that term they agreed to. So you could say that's a win condition. The final win condition, I would say, <clears throat> and as, a, as advice, if someone is flat earthing you and refusing to accept that they have been throttled throughout the conversation, like ad infinitum, then you should argue that dialectics are being compromised by them doing that. Or, for instance, if they are willing to actually engage with your argument, you can say that you win via burden of rejoinder, right? They're refusing to have the argument. If they're refusing to have the argument or even just refusing to conclude or just end it there, then they kind of are refusing to have an argument and dialect. So therefore are kind of losing said dialect. And I think that is another important aspect of argument. Anyways, those are just my basic win conditions for a debate. Uh, I think that people need to be more critical of analyzing these arguments. Um, and this is in response to a few debates about the topic. I'm not going to drop names because I don't want to get into drama or anything, but that is my thoughts on it. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something and uh, catch you on another one.